let's start with the diaphragm so that you guys can see um, how it looks. So right now, this diaphragm is uh, relaxed. And just to show you, if we start from the back, so the posterior, the most posterior of the origin, um, we said it is going to come from those lower, um, sorry, those upper lumbar vertebrae, all right, L1, 2, and 3, all right, so there's, picture some of that diaphragm coming down through here, uh, and those fa fascia kind of coming down through here. Remember, we also said it had fascial attachment, attachments at the psoas, which makes sense because the psoas has an origin of um, the lumbar vertebrae, the bodies, and the TVP. So you can kind of picture how when that psoas is originating from up here, right, and it comes down to that lesser trochanter of the um, femur, how you would see how that, there would be sort of like that intertwining of fascia between the psoas and that diaphragm muscle. All right, now um, we said it's also gonna have uh, origins up here through the lower thoracic vertebrae, all right, those bodies. Then it comes around and is going to um, uh, insert or originate on the inner surface of the lower six ribs, so seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all right? And that's gonna come around, around, all the way on the inside of the surface, uh, inside surface of those, and then it is going to uh, originate, so I keep saying insert, originate onto the um, inner surface of the xiphoid process. So origin, inner surface of the xiphoid, inside surface of the um, lower six ribs, and then the lumbar vertebrae one, two, three, and then also some of these lower thoracic vertebrae, right? So that's, and then it comes in and now it does insert onto, there'll be a central tendon in through here, and of course, there'll be those, those holes um, that naturally occur to allow the vena cava to pass through and also the esophagus to pass through. So let me just do a quick little um, visual <laughs> using, I know it doesn't look fancy, you guys, but I'm telling you, this has worked for many years to describe how the diaphragm works. So let me just tell you what the parts are in case this is confusing. Um, this is your windpipe. <laughs> this balloon represents a lung. You just have one lung today. This is representing your thoracic cavity. And this is the important thing we're talking about. This is going to be the diaphragm, all right? And so I just want to show you that when the diaphragm gets a message from the nervous system to contract, its job is to pull down, all right? What's down here? Abdominal organs, like your liver, your stomach, your pelvic organs down through here. What's even below that? That's going to be that pelvic floor that we're going to show in a bit. So when it pulls down, all right, notice what happens to, hang on, I got to get that guy empty. There you go. So there's your lung. It's relatively empty. And that's when the diaphragm is relaxed or in that more of a dome shape. Now I'm going to make this dramatic and really pull down on it. When the muscle diaphragm um, contracts, all right, oh, look at that. It changes oh. the air pressure and the lung is going to fill up. Exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale. That's <laughs> exhale. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Go ahead. Sit in your best posture in your chairs, and we're going to do this together. Go ahead. Get sit right. Pull those sits bones out so you're sitting square on the widest part of your pelvis. Place your hands low on your pelvis at those ASISs. Start here. Just get yourself nice aligned, hands on the back of your head, gently lifting your head, so somebody's suspending it towards the ceiling. Good. Hands are going back onto the pelvis. Go ahead and close your eyes and listen to my instructions. I want you very gently to send your breath in through your nose and send your breath into your hands, nice and gently. Feel that breath spreading across the bowl of your pelvis. Now as you exhale, let that exhale come out fully and gently through your nose. No pushing the breath out but make sure that the breath comes completely out. Pause for a moment and then take your next inhale. Inhale gently, allowing that breath to spread across your pelvis, filling the bowl of your pelvis. And then as you exhale, allow that breath to come out fully and gently. One more breath here. Inhaling gently through your nose, allowing that breath to find those hands gently spread across the bowl of your pelvis. And then as you exhale, Exhale lightly and gently, yet fully, allowing that breath to come completely out. Excellent. Now, so now we're talking, that's our breath going top to bottom of our cylinder. Now, we're going to use our strap. 
back up a little bit here. We're gonna use our strap. And we're gonna wrap that around the rib cage. Now we can put it around the level of the diaphragm. Ladies, it's about the level of your bra strap. So you're just gonna put this gently around here because the areas that people struggle the most are into the sides and into the back. This is a great kinesthetic cue. They can feel a little bit of pressure going into the strap. Now we're gonna imagine our breath going out into our rib cage. So again, we're gonna take our gentle breath in through our nose. We're gonna do three breaths here. In through the nose, gently. And exhaling fully and gently, allowing that rib cage to just relax as we exhale. One more breath in. Gently allowing that breath to fill out into those lungs. Exhaling fully and gently, letting all that air come out. We've got one last breath here. In through the nose, out through the nose. Good. Now we're going to get that breath front to back, front to back. So keeping your strap here, get a sense of that strap on the front side of your rib cage and the back side of your rib cage. Now very gently send your breath to the back where you feel that strap. Again, in through your nose and gently out through your nose. In through the nose. and out through the nose. Last one here. Send that breath gently into the back of that strap. See that breath spreading across your, the back rib cage and then exhale fully. Now, I'm gonna have you put that together. We're gonna do a really quick three to six breath count. So we're gonna breathe in for three, pause, exhale for six, pause, and then repeat that three times, okay? So think of the area where you felt it was the most difficult and allow yourself to find that space with your breath. So we're gonna go in for three, pause, out for six, pause and repeat, okay? So in through your nose, out through your nose, let's do this. So we're breathing in for one, two, three, pause, exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, pause, inhale for one, two, three, exhale, five, four, three, two, one, inhale, feel that breath going into the base of your pelvis, spreading across your lungs, through the back, pause, and then last exhale for six, Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So this is what it looks like on the bench. Uh, we're always going to start out with the alignment. Align the head and neck and thoracopelvic cylinder, and then hinge forward. Maintain that alignment. Hands go upon the bench. Make sure the bench is secure. And now if you look, that straight line is head and neck, shoulder, spine, hip. I'm actually doing a more advanced pattern. Don't worry about that one right now. Just let me back up. This is what I want you to pay attention to. Is this alignment here? Head and neck, shoulder, spine, hip, three-dimensional breathe. That's what we want the, the bench plank to look like. And now Melissa is going to do the floor plank. It begins with the setup. Don't let your clients just sloppily get down on the floor. Make sure they align, hinge, forearms go down upon the floor, and then they walk their legs back. So that way you know the cylinder is set up well, aligned well, and now she can maintain this alignment. If your client can be straight here, perfect, but most of your clients will not get much below where Melissa is. And you can see, I, I, when I do a plank, my butt is way in the air, but my cylinder is still aligned. Remember, the, the alignment you're looking for is ear, shoulder, spine, hip, not ear to ankle. Uh, uh, uh.